All right, can we uh, bring forth Jenny May and Jennifer Lang joining the dots in quantifying the economical value of the rural health training in community? Thanks very much. All right. Thank you. Um, I'll just work with the technology. Um, so thank you very much for having us. This is a slight change of tack from the previous um, talks. And it comes from a, um, a having a cup of coffee one day and realising that um, while the time that the Rural Clinical School and UDRH had been operating in Tamworth, i.e. since the early 2000s, that the complement of medical staff seemed to have grown, that the um, the activity seemed um, somewhat greater and obviously most of that or the thought is that that is attributable um, to the advent of the Rural Clinical School UDRH RHMT program. But it occurred to us that um, it was, the time was ripe to think about what sort of economic impact that we might be having uh, on our communities with that injection of money. So I need to acknowledge our colleagues. So Jen Lang, um, the executive officer, is here to co-present and she knows all about the numbers. And um, we need to acknowledge our colleagues, Anthea and Ivo, down at the Hunter Research Foundation who did much of the economic modelling that underpins what we're going to talk to you about. But to start off, I mean, obviously there are valuable economic outputs from rural health training and that has been somewhat of a theme um, over the last two days even, that health is an investment and it's an investment in individuals but it's also an investment in regional development. And for many of our communities, the health facilities are major um, economic drivers within those communities and are major employers. So the question is, how much can we measure and quantify that effect and how much of it is this intangible building of social capital and critical mass that we're very aware of, but um, had certainly not contemplated how you might go about measuring. So where are we? We're in northern New South Wales, and please come and visit, but we are in profound drought. And everything I say should have an overlay of the profound economic impact of drought on our communities. And, uh, when I say profound, it is 18 months since we had reasonable rain. We are one of the most richest agricultural areas in Australia and we've had no wheat crop, we've had no other you know, tangible crops other than with irrigation and irrigation is obviously in a parlous state. So please you know, be aware that um, whilst I'm talking about the wonderful economic multiplier of health, um, it is in the background that our community um, GDP, if you like, is steadily declining and that can be seen in terms of empty shops, that can be seen uh, in terms of, of the obvious money in the pocket that our farmers and the subservice industries just do not have. So anyway, with that on basis, in fact, um, the inland areas, which is where both Jen and I work in Tamworth, is only part of the um, UONDRH footprint. So obviously there's the Upper Hunter, which is probably well known for, for coal mining. And then we've got the New England area, which involves both Tamworth and Armidale as quite major centres. And then on the coast, we've got Port Macquarie, Taree and Coffs Harbour, three quite significant centres on, on the north coast. And again, um, areas of quite considerable growth, whereas it's fair to say that in our inland areas, the population is changing so that our larger centres are gaining population at the expense of the smaller communities. So their populations are uh, about the same. So since 2002 we've been delivering um, medical, the medical program, the um, joint medical program, which is a program of um, a collaboration between the University of New England and the University of Newcastle. And we take students from both those feeder years one to three in our footprint, and we take students in Tamworth, in Armidale, and in Taree for full years. So they spend a full year in the footprint. The reason I'm telling you that is because if we want to think about student expenditure as an important cofactor 
in economic activity, it's actually important. And to have students who are going to spend a year in a footprint um, potentially has a greater multiplier effect on, on, well, money spent than students who are coming for two weeks at a time. So throughout that footprint, we have allied health placements and we have year-long students in those six primary locations, so Tamworth, Taree, Armidale, Moree, Port Macquarie and Coffs. Um, and those um, nurse, nursing and allied health disciplines include full year in MRS, dietetics, occupational therapy, physiotherapy, speech therapy, and we have shorter nursing placements. So that just gives you the picture of um, who's involved. And obviously, and Jen will go on to talk about the, the number of, and the type of academics who have been employed to support the program across that footprint. So if we zero down about thinking about economic impacts, I found this um, table in an article by Pryor on Health and Place, which was really useful for us into trying to understand how we might think about the economic multiplier effect. So you can see that it divides it into an institutional effect and that of individual, in this case, health professionals. Now this is a remote framework, so um, that's what it was built for, but I think there are huge lessons and I found it a very useful framework in which to think about it. And you can see that if we look at the economic multiplier and then we've got up in the top right, we've got direct and indirect, and so that's the language we're going to be using about that. But you can see that also on that diagram are the social and human contributions that can be considered or thought of in terms of social capital or other ways of thinking about capital in communities. And then you've got the individual inputs. So what we did was we thought, well, you know, where do we start? And in fact, the analysis that we're going to present only involves those top few things. So I put that slide up to give you a sense that in terms of trying to measure economic impact, we've done the easy bits. <laughs> we've done the bits that, you know, stand out as direct and indirect, but there's quite a number of PhDs here to actually consider what are the total economic effect that rural health education, in our case, could have on a community. So I really encourage those of you who are interested in that sort of thing to consider. So I get to take over and talk about the boring stuff or Jen's giving you the context of it. Um, we deliberately chose two towns only in our footprint, Tamworth and Taree. Both of these are MM3 or RA2. Taree is in the Manning Valley, about four hours drive north of Sydney. Tamworth, northwest area of New South Wales, about five hours northwest of Sydney. What I would like to highlight that for this purpose there's possibly people sitting here who go, oh, I thought Tari was bigger, because this was about us operating directly within that area and the students living in that area, we have only concentrated on the actual town size. So, for example, in Tari, the LGA area is substantially bigger, but when we look at actually where the students spend the money, it's, it tends to be within the actual town. Um, Taree is not a wealthy town by any stretch of the imagination um, with the median income being less than half of what it is around the Australian average and within that half there's also 32% of them that earn less than $650 a week. A lot of this is driven by the fact that the unemployment rate unfortunately is a lot higher than the average and in fact is 4% higher. So combine the two, you can see why the town is not considered a wealthy place. Um, the Manning Rural Referral Hospital and the aged care industries are two of the major employers in the area. And we, as a Department of Rural Health, employ 21 staff, or well, this was 2017 when we did. Um, they're a mixture of full-time and part-time staff, and in order to support our students and get them to come, we also have accommodation spread across five sites in Taree, so that's where the 48 beds comes from, different places within the town. Um, it, it may not sound like a lot of beds, but in 2017 we supported 300 individual students to come in for a total of 1,197 weeks. 
And again, as Jen mentioned, the longer the placement, we believe the richer it is for the students. Tamworth, a little bit different. Um, again, we've only concentrated on the actual town size of Tamworth because Tamworth has got about 60,000 people when you look at the LGA area, but we've kept it within Tamworth. It's like Tamworth proper. Um, our median income is also below the national average, but is substantially higher. The good part is that our unemployment rate there is lower than the national average, so Tamworth is doing okay. Hospital is a reasonable size, and then we also have increased number of staff, both academic and professional staff, and more accommodation. Much of this is driven by the size of the hospital as well, because we rely heavily on the hospital to be able to support um, our clinical placements. The other component is that Tamworth is sort of like head office for the Department of Rural Health, so you've got more of the executive team based there, so that's why there's an increase. Um, whereas Tari, it's mainly medical students that make up the full year complement. In Tamworth, we have full year students in medicine, MRS, nutrition, dietetics, physiotherapy, OT, and then full semesters across a number of them as well. In Tamworth, we supported 288 individual placements, so actually less than Tari, but for more weeks, which was 1,831 placement weeks. So how do we go about measuring this? <coughs> um, there was a ton of ways that we could look at it. Fortunately, um, we have seen some studies that were conducted by other people. The, um, there was one particular study, which is fantastic, that was conducted by the uh, Northern Ontario School of Medicine and Professor Roger Strassen, and that was looking at local economic modelling, saying, well, you know, how much does the place benefit from us being in there? Similar study was conducted by the Hunter Research Institute to measure how the University of Newcastle proper, so as in Callaghan campus, how that has impacted on the Hunter region as well. So with these in mind, we went through and we had a look at it and the REM plan model was used. It looks at the direct cost, the direct benefits, as in money directly spent, and then the indirect benefits to the organisation as well. Um, REM plan effectively stands for Regional Economic Modelling and Planning System. So it's not something that's just some highfalutin word that's been come up with. It's actually used by a lot of local government areas. There's a number of universities and organisations around the globe that also use this type of modelling. And what we're looking at is how much money we spend and what the indirect benefits are then. So if I spend money and then I spend it with a local shop, he spends money so it's that flow and effect that goes through. The thing that we need to remember with this is that if these programs weren't being delivered in these locations, the money wouldn't be there. So that's what we sort of call the compar uh, comparator. If we're not there, these benefits wouldn't be there. So we looked, just giving you a bit more background, I guess, as I said, we're presuming that the funding isn't there, none of this would benefit. The two streams, you've got your direct stream, which is the operating cost. So it's how we, the money we spend on employing staff, the money we spend on running the education centres, looking after our students, paying local clinicians that help with our teaching, CPD costs, those sort of things. But then we've got the costs, or the, the additional direct costs of where students spend money. And I'm stunned by how much money some students can afford to spend where they're on placement, because I certainly wasn't a rich student. So we look at those two things and they are both a component of the direct benefits, the direct money that goes into those two areas. When we went through this, we didn't go, oh gosh, we've got all of this money that we get from the, co from the Commonwealth. We actually went, this is exactly what it costs us to run Tamworth and this is exactly what it costs us to run Taree. We were incredibly conservative. We could have included income where students pay us a stipend to stay in our accommodation. We didn't do that because we don't see that as a benefit to the community. We were very conservative and went, this is money that we're spending that can be seen going directly into the community, not benefiting main campus, anything like that. Um, so when we talk about the input-output model, it's the money we're putting in and the output at the other end. It is that simple. It's each industry that would benefit. So in Tamworth, and in Taree, we have a similar company that provides all our cleaning services. So 
We provide money to them, they employ people, those people then go on and spend on. Are you giving me a look already? Oh my goodness, okay. I did tell you I was worried about it. Um, so this is how it all comes together. Basically, if you have a look at this, for us to deliver our program in Tamworth, it cost us $4.3 million in 2017. Added to that, using the calculations that the university have gotten from the REM plan, students co contributed $840,000 into the um, economy, increasing it to the $5.16 million. The 37 jobs are the ones that are employed by us, plus the immediate flow on from the students spending money there. Then as if you take the cleaning people, in, for example, this is where we get a flow on effect of an additional 1.5. So we've spent money, they do it. That creates a further four positions. And as it ripples out, it becomes a bigger and bigger impact. So ultimately for Tamworth, when we spent our initial $4.3 million in 2017 delivering our programs, the benefit to the community. So this isn't money that's gone to Newcastle or anything like that. That money has gone into the Tamworth economy, so $10.6 million and has created effectively 54 roles, which is fantastic in a rural area. Tari, similar situation. So the input of the 2.6 is 2.7 of operating funds. Students put in another $611 million flowing through from the same type of thing in a town that has really high unemployment, really low median um, income. This, I actually think it's probably a better impact on Taree than what it is on Tamworth because there was an impact of 4.675 and the creation of 26 jobs. So it's kind of cool stuff to see. Do you want to take over, Jen? Yeah, and talk sure. faster? Um, so <laughs> so um, I guess comment is the multiplier effect is between 2.3 and 2.4 um, and you know I guess th uh, um, that strikes me as good value but obviously as I said I don't stand here as an economic um, modeler I stand here as a rural clinician who's interested in in education and promoting rural communities so money spent locally has to make a difference but the impact of the job creation is not only in the local health industry but obviously um, that waving out and um, I guess the question is should is that the sort of thing we should be thinking of trying to quantify as part of thinking of the benefit of actually locating services and education in rural communities so I'd also suggest to you and that comes back to that first that slide I showed you with all the ways that you could possibly consider the economic impact um, and healthcare access has to be an economic attractant there is absolutely no doubt that as the critical mass of clinicians has increased at the hospital, which will be partially attributable to the opportunity and the increased um, regional training opportunities that are now available and the increases in um, money in terms of education and capacity for clinicians, that more local people are able to stay in town and travel less. The other thing is that obviously we will be attracting people into town for health care provision who otherwise might have overflown us and gone to Sydney or somewhere else. So that's what I call the osmotic effect of health care begetting health care. There is a huge contribution of social capital which we haven't really even tried to describe for you. But there is absolutely no doubt that if you get a core of population and professionals that um, they bring with them the capacity to grow communities, to grow, uh, I guess, community know-how. And there is some extensive articles which um, I could put anybody in touch with which describe how if you situate public servants within a community, then your community facilities improve. And there is absolutely no doubt that if our general managers and our people live in communities, they have a vested interest in making sure that the services that are, that are available are of the standard that they would wish to use. So again, very difficult to quantify, but there is absolutely no doubt that social capital and the building of social capital is related to economic prosperity. And in conclusion, we should be quantifying multiple benefits for delivering health education. Obviously, the core aspect of our program is um, providing students with positive rural exposure and in our case the longer the better. 
but it is also providing local clinicians, academics and professional staff with satisfying career pathways. And we have been able to do that with the injection of funds through the RHMT program. Secondly, and importantly, that has been a huge contribution to the two communities that we've studied and no doubt to many others. And that economic community, that economic impact has the effect of maintaining, for instance, regional flying, you know, the number of flights in and per day, maintaining um, an array of, op you know, options at the supermarket, et cetera, et cetera. And um, the third and final comment is that we have not been very good at measuring some of these um, economic benefits and in particular not measuring the sort of social capital benefit that we are bringing to rural areas. And also not selling it well to the communities that we live within. We focus, we focus on measuring our success on how many students come through and how many clinicians we have, but we actually don't go into those communities and say, do you realise that us being here is giving you these benefits? And if we shared that information with them, it, that may well help them grow other parts of other projects the that they're working on.